Data Studio recently added some amazing advanced time comparison tools, and I'm going to show you how you can use them to really save yourself some time and create much better visualizations in your reports. I'm Amy Hebden with Paid Search Magic, and I'm really excited about this tutorial because it's it's really super new. Uh, prior to the end of April 2019, we just didn't have the options that we do now. So this is this is fairly new to me, and I'm excited to jump into it and, and share with you what I've learned that, that has really saved me some time. So one of the things that I tend to like to do in my reports is I'll have a start date, like a fixed start date of, say, um, either this January or last January, and I want to show uh, month by month what's been happening up until last month. And so what my options kind of were, you can see I've got this um, this custom chart here where I have my default date range is fixed. And so every single month I'd have to go in if I want to update it and select a new the new month, the new previous month, uh, click the last day of the month, and then hit apply. So that's not a problem. It just takes a little while of having to update all the reports. Now, the other thing that's a bit more of a time saver is I could just say, you know what? I want my uh, chart to go all the way through the end of the year. Um, and I can select that. But you can see here, it just it shows a bunch of blank months. And that's not terrible, but that's not always what I want to show. And so I end up having to spend a little bit of time if I want it to look the way I want it to look. And then if I want to do comparison, this just ends up taking a lot of space. And so um, neither of these were ideal for me. What I am able to do now is much more exciting because I can automatically uh, have this report update to previous month, like to the end of last month. And the way that the way I'm going to do that is go to default date range and I'm going to select custom. And then what I can do is instead of having it, I can I can set my fixed date be fixed because that's what I want to do here. And then instead of having this date be fixed, I can just say today and then basically fill in a formula for when um, when this is going to end. So I'm going to say today minus one month. Now, this doesn't get interpreted as minus 30 days from today. It's just going back one month in time. So the last the previous month. That's true for year. That's true for weeks. It's not looking at the amount of days that have passed. It's just looking for what was the last time period that this thing happened. And so by just selecting one, uh, today minus a month, I'm just going back one month. And so this is going to be good until the end of this month. And then it'll be, then it'll start showing the next month where we have the full month of data, which is what I want to be showing. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to show you a few other things you can do with this. So one of the things, um, the reports that drives me crazy, and I rarely use this, but whenever I do look at it, it, I don't like it because what we're seeing here is like sessions over the last 30 days. And really all you notice is that it goes down on weekends and the weekends don't align. That for me is what stands out most of the time I see these reports. But there is now a way using these advanced tools that you can actually align, um, align your dates so that they start on a Monday, so they're super consistent. So when there are variations and there are differences, you can see them a lot more easily. So the way you're going to do that is, um, let me just show you here. So you're going to just select last 30 days. Make sure you're not including today. It's just last 30. And then the comparison date range is going to be today. <laughs> it keeps dropping. Um, it's going to be today minus 58 days. And then you're going to compare that to the end date of today minus 29 days. And if you do that, you end up with last 30 days that also starts on a Monday. And so you have a much cleaner looking um, comparison when you're looking at, um, you know, when there's a lot of volatility between the, the weekdays and the weekends. And it really helps to create a better looking comparison there. I think so. Um, another thing that we can do is update here I've got like a rolling 13 months so I always want to be able to have the last um, like a, this month a year ago all the way through and then I want that to change so again the old way I would have had to go in using a fixed chart and update it each time what I'm gonna do here instead is I'm just gonna go down to custom and I'm going to 
I'm going to change this right now because this is this is the old way. I'm just updating it. So instead of being fixed, I'm going to switch this to advanced. And you can see there's just, there's so many options that we have to choose from here. Um, but if, if none of these are what you're looking for, you can always do advanced. And there's it's just such a cool tool to play with. So instead of saying fixed, I'm going to go to today and then I'm going to create my formula around it. And I'm going to do that for this one too. I don't know if it matters if you do it in a certain order, but so they both are, they're both going to be customized for today. So I'm going to say today minus, um, I'm going to go to months and I'm going to say 13 months. So going back to start date of May 1st, 2018, that's what I want. And then end date, I don't want it to end in June. I want it to end in May. So I'm going to, again, go back in months but I'm just going to go back one month. And now it's going to end um, at, at the end of the, the month that just finished. And it's going to keep on doing this. And so I don't have to automatically go in and refresh. Now, of course, whenever you're doing something like this, if you are trying to capture a specific time period, you'll probably want to export it because it'll just automatically update with that, without your help. Um, but if you export it as a PDF and you're able to kind of keep that data consistent. Um, I think this is a really great way just to, to save yourself some work of having to go manually update that. So one other thing to look at here, um, I've got one final page that we're gonna review. So this chart is, is very similar to kind of the concept I was talking about earlier, where we're starting with a month and then rolling it all the way through last month. And let me just, Pull this up here so you can see it. Yep. So we've got a, a fixed date where it starts and then um, basically a calculated date of where it's going to end. So it's going to go through the last month. Hopefully that's making some sense. Um, here we've got, this one's kind of cool. Um, this is looking at the previous, it's year to date and then looking at the previous two years. And so the way you're going to do that, um, this year to date, it's easy enough to, to get that set up because it's, it's an automatic uh, selection. And then for comparison date, we're going to go today minus two years. Um, and that'll take us all the way back to back to the beginning, remember, because the year goes, goes all the way up to that, that whole time period. It's not looking at the you know 365. And then we're going to say end date is 730 days. It's today minus 730 days. So that's how that gets calculated. And then that stays rolling year to date, looking at two years ago. Instead of just previous year, we can actually go back further. There's a, there's just, I, I hope this is giving you some ideas of the cool stuff you can do. Um, I wanted to just add this one other chart and I can, I can explain this uh, more in, an, in another video if need be. But here I've got, um, this is not a time series, this is a line chart. Uh, I think it's probably a mixed chart. Um, but I've got the last three weeks of data um, just, just set up to, to select that. But as you can see, this isn't sorted properly. And so it's giving me kind of a false idea of a trend that isn't actually there because it's starting with May 27th and then May 18th and then May 20th. It's just kind of all over the place. And that's because whenever we're using um, something other than a time series, we always have to go through and select sort as, as the day. Otherwise, it's not going to be right. Now here it's state it's descending the date is descending which is also not what we want because that looks a little bit backwards and so we're going to go from descending to ascending and then we've got the last 3 weeks of data um so that's how you set that up. If you have any questions um, or requests for, for more tutorials or, or ex explainer videos about this, please leave them in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials on how to create dashboards and reports in Data Studio. Thanks so much.